Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse the Planner. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast once again. Now, last week we did a sermon entitled Getting Happiness to Flow Daily in Your Life, Part 1. This is Part 2. I, why? Because you ought to be happy all the time. Are you ready to get happy and stay happy? There's so many believers that are miserable. I've seen some people miserably saved. They shouldn't be, but they are. Jesus wants happiness to flow in your life every day. But Jesse, how do you stay happy? Well, I have the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. And then I have happiness, which is an emotion of feeling. Actually, the fruit of the Spirit produces happiness in my life. Ooh, Lord, it is just such a blessing of God. Call a friend. I say it all the time. Tell them to turn that television on. Get a pencil and a piece of paper. Take some notes because you deserve to be happy every day. Why not? God wants you to be, and he loves us. So you're ready to receive part two of getting happiness to flow daily in your life. You know, I've never thought about backsliding. Never. Ever. Why? What in hell do I want? What does hell have to offer that I'm willing to give up the covenant of God in my life? Man, I got born again. I mean, I mean, it's forever. It's for it's settled. It is settled on the earth and settled in heaven. It is glory to God. But I didn't understand those things, you know. I didn't understand. I was not happy. You people watching my satellite in prison, you're not happy. But if you get Jesus in your life, you can become happy. And in the midst of that tribulation, in the midst of that trial, God can do anything. What faith will do for one man, faith will do for another. All you've got to do is reach out to it. See, God is the head of all our affairs. God has given us greater things than we deserve, than we know, than we expect. You understand that? God is, listen, I don't know why anybody asks for healing. I don't know why anybody has to ask for anything. He's already said yes. The Bible said all the promises of God are yea, which means yes, and amen, which means so be it. Did he say by his stripes you were healed? Did he say that? Yeah. Well, bless God, he's already says. Did he say he'd supply all your need according to his riches and glory? Yeah. Did he say that? Well, bless God, you don't have to ask him. He's already said yes. Did he say if you'd be a tither, he would rebuke the devourer for your sake? Did he say that? Well, bless God if he's already said yes. What are you waiting around for asking him something that he's already said yes? And if he's already said yes, then receive what he's already said and walk in it. Glory to God and flow in the anointing of Jesus and get happy. People ask me all the time, why are you happy, Brother Jesse? He's already said yes. I've already got my house in heaven. I've already got the blood covered in my life. Bible said, if I believe in all things, all things would be mine. How long does that take? Who cares? I'm living forever. I am living forever. So are you. Whether you're in a corrupt or whether you're a dead spirit or a lie spirit, you are going to live. The, you are going to live forever. Your spirit's going to live. You, you want to live where we live. If you go live where the devil lives, it's too hot. If you think the day was hot, you ain't seen hell. First, there ain't no motorcycles there, so you know it's bad. <laughs> That'll probably be some of the judgment of some of these motorcycle guys. They'll, he'll give them a tricycle that they have to ride for eternity. I don't know. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm saying happy are thy men. How many people you know today that are happy in the Lord? Most people don't have. They always have, well, I tell you what. We don't know what we're going to do. And let me tell you something. You really know the strength of who you are when you are happy in the midst of tragedy. When everything is going wrong, people think nothing goes wrong with Brother Jesse. I mean, my God, I mean, I, mean, I got the devil fighting me teeth and toenails on everything I do. Nothing comes easy to me. Nothing comes easy to you. It's not easy. You don't like people talking bad about you. Don't misunderstand me because it's not true. When I'm, I'm building buildings right now, I mean, I hit the front page of the Times Picayune in New Orleans saying he's this and he's that. I put a fence around God's building. They said he's a Waco man. He's building a compound. No, all I'm doing is building a fence. For what? To keep skateboards from out there. Let God, every kid in the world want to get on them parking lots out there so they don't get hurt out there. Just trying to make it look nice. Just trying to be a blessing. If you drive something that looks nice, I, I, I was driving, I was jogging, and a man drove by me in a white pickup truck and blew the horn. He said, hey, you that white-headed preacher on television. I said, there are other white-headed preachers on television. <laughs> Robert Shuler's on television. His hair's as white as mine. Then he got, he got real belligerent. He said, I heard you have a Lexus. And I was jogging. I said, you heard wrong. I have two of them. Bye. And I just took off. I can't walk. I don't care. I don't care what you think of what I got. I am not going to make 
an excuse for the prosperity and the blessings in my life. I give glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. He blessed me. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. A man asked me the other day, he said, I heard you were doing pretty good. I said, better than that. He went, you're not going to deny it? I said, why should I deny it? I said, the Lord's been good to me. You don't look like you're doing too good. I guess you lost, huh? Now, you see, people automatically going to judge you by some possession. Man, whether God ever gave me anything or not has nothing to do with it. It's just know that he loves me. You know, to know that God truly loves me. Happy are thy men. So I made up my mind to be happy. It's not easy sometimes. Sometimes you want to be sad. But God is the head of all our affairs. Turn with me to Psalms 115 real quick. I want to show you something real quick. Psalms 115. Glory to God. I want you to see this here. Psalms 115. Praise the Lord. You, you guys that are in the, in the prison, the ladies in the prison, turn to Psalms 115. You got a Bible in there. Psalms 115. I want to read verse 12. It says, The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. Psalms 115, verse 12. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. Now, people say, well, that's an Old Testament scripture. I'm the seed of Abraham. I'm a Cajun, but I'm adopted into the Jewish family. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord. What does that mean? Not afraid of them, that respect him. Both small and great. Isn't that wonderful? Both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Now, don't get mad at me. If, if I'm blessed, he said it before I was ever born. That ought to make me happy. But blessing is not just money, ladies and gentlemen. Blessing is beyond money, beyond what you can think of. See, a problem ceases to be a problem when, when answers arise. You got a problem? Well, quit searching the problem and start looking for the answer. See, believe in all things in his word produces those promises. Now watch this. Wisdom is, let me just, is, how do I say this? It's prosperity's first cousin. Notice the Bible said it in 1 Kings 10 there, that wisdom and prosperity were with it. Wisdom, first cousin is prosperity. Money does not bring happiness to a person or to a church. Prosperity does. See, money, money is just one small facet of prosperity. Go, go with me to 3 John chapter 2 real quick. 3 John chapter 2. Watch this. I want you to see this. People think that money is what brings people happiness. I've known some people that were billionaires that committed suicide. Did you know that? Now, that was, why, why would that happen? Because money is not prosperity. I mean, that's one small facet of prosperity. Listen to me. Money doesn't bring happiness to a person or to a church. Prosperity does. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things. Now, think about that. Stop right there. What things is God's wishing above all? What things? Just get things in your mind. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prosper. Now, I, now you men and women that are in prisons, listen, it doesn't make no difference where you are. God is still saying, I want you to prosper there as these people, want, God wants them to prosper here. See, you choose the place where you are. God says, it doesn't make no difference to me where you are. If you'll understand me, I want you to prosper. I had a theologian get in my face one time. He said, Brother Jesse, the, God did not say that, that the Apostle John was writing to his friend Gaius. I said, well, since you know the word so wonderful, go over to 2 Timothy 3, 16, and the Bible said all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. He didn't say it's profitable. It's profitable. So I said, my God, the reason John said it because it was divinely inspired by God himself. He was writing to Gaius. God arrested his mind. He started writing to Jesse. You understand? So prosperity is more than money. I mean, money's nice. And let me tell you something about money. It's a wonderful thing. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. And the reason why God said that is because you make money your source when you love it. If you keep God your source, he'll bless you in the city, bless you in the field, bless you going in, bless you going out. Now, some of you watching my television say, well, bless God, that means my, what about the people that don't have money in life? Well, God loves them too. But God don't have, is no respect a person. One man told me that they were every, not everybody can be blessed. I said, well, God said they could. Now, either you lie and the God lie, I pick you. <laughs> he said, the poor you'll have what you always. Why did he say that? Why did Jesus say the poor you'll have what you always? Because most people helping the poor are not anointed to do so. Thank God they do help the poor. Thank God for compassion. But you know what? If you give people a fish to eat, they will, they'll need one every day. But if you teach them how to fish, they can get on their own. 
You see, you got to have the anointing to break poverty. You ain't going to break poverty with money. The United States government does that every year. Throws billions of dollars to foreign aid, and those countries are still poor. Why? Because the United States is not anointed to break the poverty cycle. But Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God's upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Good news to the poor. You got to be anointed because poverty is a supernatural problem. And it's answered by a supernatural answer called prosperity. But money's only one small facet of prosperity. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as my soul prosper. Now watch this. Uh, a couple of you, three years, about two years ago, I had a 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream motorcycle. I mean, how many of y'all seen that bike I had? That thing was a beautiful bike. My God, I love that bike. Well, I had some guy get in my face. He says, How much money you pay for that bike? I said, Just enough to get it. <laughs> He just gonna jump on my case because of my motorcycle. He said, I'll tell you what, I just, that's an expensive bike. I said, you're right. It's very expensive. <laughs> it's, beyond you. it's beyond you. Boy, he didn't like that. I wasn't trying to put him down. I said, my God, the Lord has one blessed me with it. You know how hard it was to find that bike? Kathy wanted me to go down to the Harley Davidson shop and buy a brand new one. I didn't want a brand new one. I wanted a 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream. I said, God, that's what I put my order in for. You understand? That's the kind of bike I want. Yeah, but you can go get a brand new one like this. It's a 1998. This was, uh, uh, you know, three, three years ago. I said, I don't want a new one. Cat said, I go buy a new one. I said, don't want a new one. I had a Harley Davidson owner guy. I said, listen, man, I'll put your name at the top of the list. You can have a bike next month. I said, no, I want a 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream. I want it with a lot of shiny stuff on it. I like shiny stuff. I'm like a raccoon. Yeah. I like shiny stuff. Now, this guy's jumping all over my case over that motorcycle. But that's, I put my order in. I could have gone bought me one. That's not the issue. I said, no, I want a 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream. Now, to find that thing, man, I mean, they quit making that color. But sure enough, I was preaching in Tulsa, oh, excuse me, in Oklahoma City. Got a phone call from Jerry Seville. He said, hey, Jesse. I said, hey, Jerry. He said, what you doing? I said, preaching. I said, what you doing? He said, preaching. I said, okay, what's next? <laughs> that's what we do. He said, Jerry, Jesse. He calls me Jerry sometimes, and I call him Jesse. We get mixed up. <laughs> It happens all the time. People ask me all the time, boy, I really like your book on favor. I said, thank you very much. I enjoyed writing that book. <laughs> That's Brother Jerry's book. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it's the same thing. That they say, they look at Brother Jesse. How you doing, Brother Jesse? He goes, fine. <laughs> you notice I've got taller? Mm. <laughs> but anyway, so his son-in-law, Rodney Foy, is looking through some little bitty newspaper, and there is an article this big. It says, 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream for sale. He picks up this. This is this big, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't a half inch big. He called Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry gives a witness. The spirit calls me. He said, Jesse, I believe that's your Bible. Woo. What a phone number. I said, have you seen it? He said, no. He said, Rodney found this little thing. In it. I said, where is it? He said, it's in Bowie, Texas. <laughs> Bowie, Texas. I never knew. Did Jim Bowie make it? To Bowie, Texas? I know he went to the Alamo and lost his life there. So I took the number. He said, and Brother Jerry said, you know, that, that may be your bike, Jess. So I called the man. He said, oh, hell out. You can tell he's from Texas. He said, I said, hell out. I said, so I tried to act like a Texan. I said, oh, hell out. My name is Jesse Duplantis. He said, boy, you don't sound like a Texan. I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm way south. I said, do you have a 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic Turquoise and Cream? He said, uh-huh. He said, it's for sale. <laughs> like as if I didn't know that. <laughs> I said, well, that's the kind of bike I'm looking for. You got any money? <laughs> I said, I got a couple of bucks. My wife's got the rest. He said, I'm out on talk to your wife. I said, here's her number. <laughs> I said, no, sir. I said, um, I am interested in the 1992 Heritage Soft Tail Classic, and I want it stock color. He said, it's stock color. He said, I got 2,000 miles on it. I said, why do you want to sell it? And he said, well, my wife got a little tired on the back. I said, you did? Yeah, he said, you know, them seats are kind of small. And he said, that's all I'm going to say about that. I said, yes, sir. I said, sir, I am a minister of the gospel. He said, really? 
I said, really? I said, I'm in the middle of a meeting right now. I said, I'd like to come see that bike, and if it's what I want, I'll buy it. How much you want for it? He said, I want exactly what I got in it. And I thought to myself, my God, you know, good bikes cost twenty-something thousand dollars. I said, how much? He said, twelve thousand five hundred dollars. I said, it's it's who? It's Jesus. It's it, it's Jesus. I almost did my black. <laughs> yeah, no. I said, sir. He said, I also got two thousand dollars worth of chrome. You like chrome? <laughs> Do I like chrome? Do I like chrome? I like chrome. I want to put all my teeth chrome. I said, but I can't get there till I finish this revival. He said, I'm Baptist. I said, well, that's good. He said, my word's my bond. He said, your word's your bond. I said, yes, sir. He said, I'll hold this bike till you can come see it on Friday. Now, brother, that was on a Monday. He said, I don't care if somebody come in here with $30,000 for it. It ain't for sale. It's yours, mistress. I feel like this is the bike you want, and I think you'll take care of it. I said, I'll tell you what, I won't let a bug get on it. <laughs> Man, I called. I said, I'll be there Friday to come see it. He said, it's off the books. It's yours. And if you don't want it, fine. Now, that man was a man of honor. I called Jerry. I said, Jerry, this guy's holding this bike. He said, I'm going with you. I said, okay, come on away. He said, I'll pick you up at DFW. So he picked, I flew out, I finished my meeting on Wednesday night. I flew Thursday over to Jerry's house and he picked me up at the DFW airport. Boy, we took off down there. And sure enough, that was sparkling, beautiful. I said, this is it. This is it. I got happy. Happiness came upon me. <laughs> I said, start it. And he went like, come on, blah, 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 blah. Well, I bowed my head because I knew it was speaking in tongues. I said, blah, 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 blah. blah. And it was saying, thus saith the Lord to Jesse, this is your bike, your bike. Mm -hmm. This is your bike, blah, blah, blah. I said, I said, sir, we brought a trailer, put it on there. He said, you got the money? I said, I got the money. I went in my wife's purse, I got the money. <laughs> I paid him cash for that bike. I was happy. But you know whether I would have got or not, that didn't make me happy. What made me happy was that God found that bike for me. It was in, I live in New Orleans, Louisiana. What are the odds of Rodney Foy picking up a newspaper with a, a, a you know, a little writing this big? You're not going to see it. It's, you know, it's real small and classified. Very, very small. And why would he even be looking in the classified or looking at the start? Anyway, but God knew I would enjoy that bike. And I drove that bike. And some, when a bug hit it, I got off. <laughs> I'm serious. I love that bike. I'd come in and Kathy said, you missed me? I said, let me go see my Harley. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> and my, and my, I'd go in that shed and I'd say, Daddy, home, baby. <laughs> they ain't been treating you bad, have they? Mm -mm. <laughs> Daddy, home. I just won't touch you. Did you notice that Cajun statement I used? I speak myself happy. Praise the Lord. I kind of like it. That's really the truth. Do you see that? Whether I'm glad or mad, it's my choice. I choose to be glad. I choose to be mad. But God is with us all the time. So seek him. Learn of him and let his joy, not yours, his joy and happiness flow through you and for you. How do I do that, Brother Jesse? Very simple. You got a pencil and a pad? Write this down. Number one, stay in the word. That is imperative. You read it, you hear it, and you speak it. Remember, the eye gate, the ear gate, and the mouth gate. Those are the reservoirs for happiness to flow in your life daily. Now think about that. People say, you and Kathy have a happy marriage. Yes, we do, but it doesn't mean we don't argue. Oh yeah, we argue. You'd be surprised how we can argue. And we would never argue if she would just listen to me, but you know. <laughs> anyway, she's in the studio right now with look glaring eyes. I know that. Glory to God. So to stay happy in a marriage, you, you enjoy each other's interests. You share that, and then you flow with that. And I'm telling you, man, it's amazing how life will go past. And me and Kathy have been married 50 years. Hallelujah. Isn't that a blessing of God? To the same woman, that's a miracle of God. Even if you are a Christian, praise God. Why? Because of the joy of the Lord in our lives and the happiness that God gives us. 
Well, it's such a blessing. Listen, there's so much more for you to learn from this teaching, getting happiness to flow daily in your life. It's our December partnership offer. So I encourage you to order a copy today. You need to get this thing in its entirety. How do y'all do that? Just go to jdm.org for all the ordering information. That's jdm.org. I promise you it will help you and minister life to you. You know, Kathy and I love, and we love praying for you. We pray for all our partners, all our friends, all the time. I received this prayer request from a man named Hunter. He said this, Jesse, I'm 30 years old, and I've been struggling with direction for my life. I've had several jobs since college, and none of them have worked out. I don't know how to find my way to a fulfilling career or family life. Please pray for me. Hunter, I'm going to do that right now. But, you know, the Bible says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he would guide you in all truth. Hunter, maybe you're trying to make your way unless God, let God make your way. Every door has a doorknob, Hunter. You could pull on it and open it. But if you ought to walk through the doors that God opens, how do I know those doors? They're like supermarket doors. You get close to the supermarket door, mm, it opens up. Notice when you go through, mm, it, it, it closes back. Why? It, it protects your front and protects your back. Father, I ask you to give Hunter direction right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let him know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it. And so many people may have the same problem. So, Lord, I set myself in agreement. If two of us agree, well, Hunter's one and I'm two, and it's going to come to pass. Hunter's going to have a great fulfilling life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That's such a simple prayer. But not only does that want to help Hunter, that'll help you if you're having that same problem. I'm telling you, man, you, you, you can know what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it in life. And here's the book, here's the course that you take. And that's the Bible. And I mean that sincerely. It's a blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, stay right there. We want to show you a few things that are happening here at our ministry. Man, there's so much going on all the time. And I'll be back in just a minute to speak another word to you. Watch this and you'll be blessed. I hope you're enjoying the program because I enjoy coming into your home and talking to you. Watch this. Are you ready to experience the Christmas story like never before? In his book, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year, Jesse Duplantis delivers an insightful, fresh look at the manger and beyond. You'll be inspired to have a higher life of faith as he explores the mysterious ways God moves. Get ready to elevate your character with the characters of Christmas. The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. Uncommon lessons from the Christmas story. Order your copy at JDM.org today. We've been to Australia, we've been to Europe, just preaching the gospel everywhere. Just, just going all over, preaching the gospel. Jesus! And how can they hear lest they have a preacher? Letting the world forget the words of God. And the only way they're going to do that is with voices and people like me and you. That's why I'm on television all the time. That's why I'm trying to get as much television time as I can. Not so many more people can see who I am, but I am interested in building God's kingdom to such a degree that the world will see who he really is. Come on, it's time. Ladies and gentlemen, God's word is coming to pass in great ways through Jesse DePlantis' ministry. And I mean that sincerely. Prayers are being answered like never before. Eyes are being opened and people are seeing the truth of who Jesus is. Why is that? It would not be possible without our faithful financial partners. And I want to say thank you, and I hope me and Kathy say thank you enough. I mean that. Without your faithful financial support, we wouldn't be here. This desk wouldn't be here. This set wouldn't be here. People getting saved every day wouldn't get saved through our ministry. Why? Because, we, we, well, we, we can't, it costs money to do all these things, and we live in an economic world, so it takes finance to do it all. I want to thank you once again. Plus, I believe in the 30, 60, and the 100 fold, and a 1,000 time return, and I will not stop believing that until you get it. 
Also, this book I'm talking about, man, the most wonderful time of the year book, it's a blessing. It's about the different characters that God used to get Jesus on the ground. You know, the prophecy said he'd be born in Bethlehem. But you don't take a nine-month pregnant woman, put her on a donkey, and go 110 miles, because that's not going to happen unless Caesar Augustus tell you to do that. Now, why did God use such an evil person like Caesar Augustus? Watch this. The unconscious obedience of the unbeliever. The believers weren't listening, so God used an unbeliever to get it done. This book makes a great Christmas present. All you got to do is order it at jdm.org, and you'll be blessed. It's been a joy ministering to you today, and I mean that sincerely. I, I, I just enjoy doing this because, you see, it's a calling on my life. It's a calling on me and Kathy's life. We are reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. Our social media platforms are jammed. And let me say this again. If you watch us on YouTube, please subscribe and click on the button and hit the bell. Bless God. It don't cost you nothing. And that way you'll know when we're there and all that kind of stuff. And you can tune in or have some of your friends do it. Share it with other people. Plus Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those different things. It's a blessing. Plus broadcast television. Don't you think we're busy? <laughs> yes, we are. And be sure and tune in next week for my new message. Listen to this. The business meeting that produced the Christmas story. God had a business meeting. And out of that business meeting came Jesus Christ as the Son of Man. Walked on the earth in the same flesh that you have. Had the same temptation you had. Think about that. Didn't call himself the Son of God called himself the son of man. Whoo, he called himself the son of God when he came back. Hallelujah. But he said, when you see me, you see the father. Boy, that just turns my clock. I hope you can get the book. I hope you can be a partner to this ministry. Help me to reach people. I know how to get people out of depression and discouragement and despondency. I know how to get people healed. I know how to get people saved. I'm not bragging about that. I've been doing this a long time. I started with brown hair. Can you believe it? Brown. Hey, but thank God I still got some hair. Praise the Lord. Help me to do that. That's what it's all about. 100% goes in the world evangelism. And me and Kathy don't ask you to be a partner without us being a partner. We are great givers, probably the best and greatest giver to this ministry. Thank you for being a partner. And partners, I'm praying for 30, 60, 104, 1,000 times for you today and every day. This is Jesse saying I love you. See you. Bye-bye. In the December issue of Voice of the Covenant magazine, Jesse teaches on the miracle of Jesus Christ. Kathy shares on God's indescribable gift. You will be encouraged with Glorious Moments praise reports. View our TV and meeting schedule and much more. Voice of the Covenant magazine, available in your mailbox on the free JDM app and interactive at jdm.org. Get your copy today. He had a business meeting. And out of that business meeting was birth, the Christmas story. He said, I'm going to make a man. I'm going to put my name in it. I'm going to call him us. Let us make man. See, you are us. You are spirit housed in a soul and clothed in a body just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost.